Hello and what's up YouTube? In this video, I will show you how I was able to add a powder pump to my homemade powder coating gun. So I bought this Jima type IG06 powder pump. I'll take it apart to quickly show you how this powder pump works. It is kind of heavy as it is made with sol solid metal piece. It has these two air input ports. It has this removable threaded sleeve that holds this hose connector. And inside is this insert sleeve. At the back of the pump body is a nozzle right there. There is a threaded plug you can remove in case the nozzle needs replacement. And here you can clearly see that the nozzle is fed with compressed air coming from the conveying air inlet port. And that nozzle is pointing straight to the pump hose connector. A jet of compressed air from the nozzle go past the opening of the powder inlet. This creates a negative pressure called the Venturi effect. The powder is drawn out of the hopper due to the negative pressure and forced out to the hose connector outlet of the pump. The insert sleeve has an o-ring. That o-ring seals off the chamber on the pump body connected to the conveying air input port. Another chamber connects to the supplementary air inlet through this hole. The hose connector is actually part of the chamber. The supplementary air fills in the gap in between the insert sleeve and the hose connector body and eventually goes to the hose together with the air powder mixture drawn out by the Venturi. The amount of conveying air and supplementary air are adjusted by air regulators to achieve the required amount of powder output. Here is a drawing showing the internal parts of the Jima powder coating pump. I will make the powder hopper out of these plastic food containers. I cut these two holes on the lid. The bigger hole at the center will be for the PVC bulkhead fitting that I connect like so. I also have this short PVC pipe attached to the bulkhead fitting to act as the powder pickup tube. And that is how they all go together. The smaller hole in the lid is a vent and is necessary because a vacuum will be created inside the hopper. Now the powder inlet tube of the pump with its two o-rings fits snugly to the PVC bulkhead fittings. And that is how I was able to make a very simple powder hopper fitted with a Jima powder pump. And we can easily do this simple assembly to other containers as well to have a different capacity of powder hopper. I have these identical food containers so that when I am done powder coating, I can just change to a regular lid and the powder hopper becomes the powder storage container. Now it is time to test the powder pump with my homemade gun. For testing purposes, I am using all-purpose flour. 
As the name implies, this type of flour can be used for many other purposes than making bread. For the powder hose, I am using the ordinary gas hose for the kitchen stove. I then connect two air lines, one for the conveying air and another one for the supplementing air. And that is how my new hopper with Jima powder pump connects to my homemade powder coating gun. I connected two air regulators to my small air compressor to adjust the pressure going to the powder pump. On my first test, the volume of powder shooting out of the gun is not consistent and is fading away. And when I check to the hopper, there is a cavity created at the bottom of the pickup tube. The powder is not settling down the bottom like a fluid, so at some point, the pump has no powder to suck in. Professional powder coating machines have either a fluidizing air at the hopper or a vibrating pad to overcome this issue. I will attempt to make a vibrating pad for my hopper as I think it is easier to make than a fluidizing hopper. I bought this cheap plastic chopping board and cut it in two pieces. I have this 12 volts cooling fan from an old computer and I drilled holes on the chopping board to mount it with countersink screws. I drill the hole on one of the fan blades and attach a bolt and nut. This will cause imbalance to the fan rotation and therefore cause the desired vibration. I drilled holes at each corner of the chopping board. Then I used these holes to attach these four springs with cable ties. The springs will allow the top portion to move freely. I use a piece of weight at the bottom of my vibrating pad to make it stable. And as you can see, after applying input voltage, it vibrates due to the imbalance of the rotating part of the fan. Changing the input voltage changes how the pad vibrates. I place my homemade powder hopper on top of this vibrating pad and secure it with cable ties. The vibration will make the powder want to settle to the bottom so that the powder pump pickup tube always have some powder to suck in. So there is my new powder hopper equipped with a Jima powder pump on top of my DIY vibrating pad. Alaya. And finally, it is time for testing. Wow! I now have consistent powder shooting out of the gun. I have to tweak the air regulator adjustments to get the optimum powder cloud, but nevertheless, my new contraption works. On the next video, I will show you this setup in action, powder coating some metal pieces. Thank you for watching and hope you stay tuned and see my other videos. God bless you all.